everyone. Amen. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. King David said that I was glad when they say that to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord and praise Him. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Yes. So before we praise God, I want us to start with a declaration and a prayer for our nation. And um, as we sing this song, just connect with God in prayer and just lift this nation into His hands. Because the motto of this nation says that for God and my country, which means that God comes first in this nation. And let's just worship Him this morning. Let justice fill this nation. Have mercy, Jesus, please forgive us. Take the heart. Take the heart of stone away. Teach our hearts. Teach our hearts to bow before your name.
Church of God, this nation of God, that we will stand firm on the truth of your word, O oh God. Jesus, we exalt you. We exalt your name this morning. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you can testify about the goodness of our God this morning? Our God has been good and awesome. Every day, who knows what could have happened on your way here, but God watched over you. He brought you here safely. And as I was chatting with a friend this week, we were just discussing about coming to the presence of God and worshiping Him. And one thing that stood out for us was this time that we have is limited. The time that we have on earth is limited. No wonder King David said that, Lord, teach me to number my days. Right. So every time we come to the presence of God, that time is very, very precious. He says, better is one day in my courts than a thousand days elsewhere. There is a reason why God says, better is one day in his house than a thousand days elsewhere. And so as we come to the presence of God and just lift our voices and worship him, there is no better moment you will get than this very moment that you have. 
the presence of God. So as we worship him, I just want you to lift your voice. Just pour out your heart to him. Because he is here. The Holy Spirit is here. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. Just know that our God is in this place. And whatever you have, whatever pride, whatever you feel on the inside of you, whatever longing, whatever desire you have for him, God is going to fulfill that this morning. Just lift your voice. All hearted and with everything that you've got. And praise and worship our God this morning. God is good. All the time. Put a song of praise. In this heart of mine. God is good.
talks about the supremacy of the Son of God. And it says that the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have, have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he may have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile himself to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you are alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to, pre to present you holy in his sight without blemish, and free from accusation. Hallelujah. If you continue in your faith established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard, and that has been proclaimed to every preacher under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Wow. Paul talks about Jesus being the firstborn, all creation. And he says that through him all things were created visible and invisible, even the things that you do not see. And through him all things hold together. And this morning we are going to just declare, you know, all of life is, is about God. Everything about your life is about God. Everything about your family is God. If you look back, if you look at your neighbor, look at all that is around you, it's all about Jesus. It's all about you. Jesus, all this is for you. For your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should, as if you should do things my way. You will all It's all about you.
worship him this morning. Lift your voice. Lift your voice all across this place. Our God is here. Our God is here. He is a soldier. He is a king of kings. He is a God of wonders beyond our God. He is our Savior. God, Jesus, you died for our sins. Oh, my God. We cannot even attach a cost to him. Oh, we worship you. Hey, here we are, my God, lifting our hearts to you. Here we are, my God, lifting our hands to you. Singing, here we are to worship you, Jesus. Here we are to worship you, Jesus. Here we are to worship you, Jesus. Oh, Rabba, Saga, Kashi, Rabba, Saga, You are magnificent. 
There is no one like you and we cannot give you enough worship because we are limited. We are limited in seeing and understanding who you are. But Lord, receive the praise and the worship from our lips, from our hearts, O oh God. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. In this time, we're going to pray. Let's begin by praying for our nation. We started with a song in which we are raising our nation. Let's pray for our nation, that it will be a God-fearing nation. That will, our love for God will grow. We'll not just be a nation that is just moving, but we'll be guided by the Lord. And our leaders will be guided by the Lord. Let's pray. There's a lot that is going on in this nation that is not pleasing to God. Let's pray that the Lord will change and, and, and change this nation that we worship Him fully and completely. Let's pray for our nation together. Mighty Father, we thank you for this nation of Uganda. We thank you because you knew us even before Uganda was, was uh, created. Even before Uganda became a nation. Even before many of us were born, you knew us. We are very grateful, Lord, that you have loved us as a nation of Uganda. You have seen us through the years of turmoil. You have stood by us, even in the years of peace. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, because you have led us. Lord, we pray that even as we said that, oh, Uganda, may God uphold you, that, Lord, you will be the one to uphold this nation. There is a lot going on. There is a lot of witchcraft being done openly, my Father. We ask you that you forgive us as the nation of Uganda. To have a compromise. Forgive us as Ugandans. Many times we have compromised with sin. There's been a lot of complacency in our lives, my God. Even us as believers, we have not stood for righteousness sometimes. Forgive us, my Lord. Lord, you have called us to be the light. You have called us to be the salt. Help us to be. Help us in our weakness, oh Lord, we pray. Help us to walk in you in, with fear and trembling, my Father, that we will stand out for Christ. Mighty Father, we pray for this nation of Uganda, that even as the missionaries came to this country, now we will be sending out missionaries in the whole world to bring people to Christ, that people will have the fear of the Lord, and people will see Christ, and this nation will be the known known as the nation of the Lord. Even as Israel is known as the nation of the Lord. We thank you and we honor you, Lord, for whatever you have done and for answering our prayers. We have been having series about false uh, falsehood and false prophets. Let's pray that as believers who we'll stand for Christ, we will not, uh, we'll not waver. We will stand and walk in righteousness. Let's pray, not for only for us, but everywhere else. And also, let's pray for those who are in that and under the false prophets that they will turn to Christ. Let's pray for that. Mighty Father, you have called us to worship you in spirit and in truth. You know, there's a lot of falsehood. There are many doctrines that are coming up, that are going around. But Father, you are calling us to be a nation. You are calling us as individuals to walk in righteousness, to walk in holiness. Lord, we pray that we will not waver, we will not drop cold. Where there's been, where we have grown cold, oh Lord, let the way of the Holy Spirit work in us, to change us, to win and to act according to the, the will of God. Holy Spirit work in us. And Lord God, we are drawing and calling those who are under the, the churches of false prophets, those who are working in other doctrines, other than what is in the Bible. Lord, we are calling them to Christ. We are calling them to righteousness. Lord, the heart of the King is in your hands. Lord, we are calling the heart of your We pray that your hand will draw those hearts back to yourself. Lord God Almighty, we pray for ourselves as well. Where we have grown gold, cause us to walk, to turn back to you. There are many of us who have grown uh, we, uh, used to sin. Lord,
Lord, help us to change yes, and Lord. walk in righteousness. Yes, Lord. Lord, we know we are weak, but we have a strong God, yes. and we are able to be able, we are able to walk in righteousness because our God, you are righteous. Yes. We give you praise, we give you glory. Almighty Father, we live before you the families. Let's pray for the families. June was a, a month of the families. Mighty Father, we pray for the families. We pray that we work uh, together, there will be unity in the families, that uh, there will be righteousness in our families. Lord, we pray for prayer altars in our families, in our homes, that we will be turning back to the Lord. Where we have uh, there's been issues uh, in our families, Lord, there's a lot to be learned. We pray that our families will be Yes. Lord, we pray for the future families of God and in heaven. Lord, God Almighty, pray for our sons and our daughters as they seek uh, uh, spouses, that they'll get spouses who have the fear of the Lord, that they'll have godly families of God, that will bring glory to your name, and they'll bring up children who have the fear of the Lord. Lord, God Almighty, we thank you. Let's pray for the construction of our church. King of glory, we raise our church before you. Lord, your word says that unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. <coughs> King of glory, our church has to be completed. Lord God Almighty, that is our tabernacle, it is our temple. King of glory, you know the temple is our heart, but also there is also the physical temple. King of glory, we ask you that you enable us to bring our, our offering. We will give willingly and cheerfully. We will give uh, beyond uh, and above what we can, oh God, like in the time of Solomon, that you will be able to complete our, our church, oh God. Give us the ability. Let's pray for the children. There's been a lot going on. The devil is attacking our children in schools. Through, the, through education. Let's pray that the Lord will protect our children. King of glory. Our children are blessing from you. Lord, you knew our children even before they were born. Even before they were conceived. Father God Almighty, we pray for our children. Protect them from the wells and the snares of the devil. There's been a lot of homosexuality. Even hidden in the cartoons they watch. Even through the books they read. King of glory, protect our children. We cover their minds with the blood of Jesus. Come, Lord God Almighty, give our children godly friends. That they will not be turned, they will not turn aside from you. But they will be the ones to turn others to Christ. Lord God Almighty, we pray for our children. Some are already in, uh, taken uh, by the homosexuality. But King of Glory, we are calling them back to Christ. We are calling them back to righteousness. Lord, some are involved in drugs. Others have evil friends. But Lord, we are claiming their souls for Christ. Lord, we are calling our children back to Christ. And Lord, we thank you for those who are working in righteousness, those who are godly. Father, we continue, we pray that they'll stand strong in Christ. We pray that our children, much as they are coming to a Pentecostal church, they will accept Christ for themselves. Lord God, we thank you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> for ministering. Yes, they deserve a clap offering. Yes. Because 
they don't only minister at this time, but they start uh, preparing even during the week. So we thank you, choir, and God bless you. I want to take this opportunity to welcome the first time visitors. Do we have any visitors among us? First time visitors? The other thing we are reminded that we should uh, invite people. So even myself, I realized that I've not been inviting people to church. Let's take the opportunity to invite people to come and pray with us. Um, you never know they may decide to stay. So we thank the Lord for that. Uh, those of Sometimes they say burning testimony, but even the one which is not burning is still a testimony. Do we have any testimonies? <clears throat> ah, hallelujah, we got someone. You know the Bible says in Revelation that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony. So testimonies are also part of overcoming the devil. Praise God, church. Amen. So for the past two months, I've been handling a project for my workplace. And the project's deadline is Wednesday this week. So last week, we are concluding and training goes on. It's done. The guy that gave us the connections for the routers. OK, I don't know how to explain this, but we have three branches. So the routers have to connect one server to work for those three branches. So the information comes from one server and goes to other two branches. This guy, after we're done with the training, complains that his payment was not done and he cancels the connection. Like last week on Thursday. We know the deadline is this week on Wednesday. We're done with training, everyone knows it's done. So I'm like, yeah, I call this guy. Thursday, call him, Friday, call him, Saturday, he does not pick. And I call his boss. I'm like, if you guy is complaining about payment, you can just call me, let me know, I work out his payment. This guy just made 450000 I talk to my boss, he's like, nah, yeah. I call the guy to pay him. He does not pick again. I'm like, you know what, I will not handle this guy. Let me leave him. Now, today during, actually, last night, I thought about how we're going to connect this thing without this guy. But before doing that day, I called the service provider first. And actually on Thursday, after the training happened, the system, internet on one branch, the server, the server branch went off. So we could not receive the information on, like, to the other two branches. Now yesterday when I was looking through it and I spoke to their main boss, I'm like, you know what, if this system is going to be reliant on internet, and in Uganda you can't have internet on 100% every day. We are cancelling your deal. We won't pay your guy. I'm not going to pay that money. Let's look for a way we won't use the internet. So this has saved me a whole 450 because I know now I'm going to have to pay 2 million to connect those three branches that would have added another 450 on top of it. And when we were thinking about how God is good, I thanked God for this guy not picking those calls. I thanked God for the system failing on Thursday. Like, what I want to say is an encouragement, guys. Things go bad for us to see that God is working somewhere. Amen. Uh, praise God, church. Amen. Uh, I want to thank God for yesterday. Yesterday was the year's VD. I'm sure some of you here uh, went for the VD. But I want to thank God that. that <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to thank God that uh, the report can't give it from the teacher. 
about about Ariel and Mariana uh, was good and reasonable. Thanks a lot. I have a whole booklet of testimonies, but let me just give one and a half. Praise the Lord. I testify to the goodness of the Lord in the life of my daughter Patience. I am very happy that today she stood up to say something, to say to say a thank you to God because she set out to be a pilot. You know, that is all that she really focused on. It's not like she has changed, but I am thankful that she is at peace Amen. with what she's doing right now. So just like she said, a word of encouragement, if you set out and say, I want to be the president of Uganda, and it is not, you have not yet achieved it, do not give up. You can still be an MP. You can, you know, we start somewhere. God is not done yet. And uh, my last bit of the testimony is uh, I just need to see by show of hands how many people here are serving in ministry in this church and you, you know you're serving. An Asha, worship leader, Musumba is definitely serving like so many things. Can we put up our hands? There's a reason why I'm asking this. How many of us here are serving? People while we are waiting for God to make patience the pilot, you must be serving. Stop sitting to warm those chairs. I am just reminding us that there is a lot here to do. In the first service, I'll tell you what happened. We were short of ushers. But there are very many people here, including me, who can actually usher. So please do not wait for God to give you when you cannot give back to him. Do not wait for an announcement to be made here. There is a resource table at the back there. Go and sign up to do something. There is ushering. There is money counting. Rachel, please stand up. Chiriowa. Chiriowa is in charge of the ushers. You've seen her. Please go and contact her. We have a prayer ministry, GFM 24-7. Some of you registered, but some of you, we do not know whether you're praying in your closets. But we would love to know that you're active. Those people that are active, it's God who rewires, I don't judge. But I pray that everyone, I see the choir having so many people coming up to the choir, which is very nice. It's not the only ministry in church. We have people that come to church, they just need someone to talk to. I beg you, I implore you, if you're born again and you were saved from something, talk to someone today. Amen. Amen. Praise God, Church. Mm -hmm. I want to thank God for He has been so much good to me. Uh, I'm going. I have many testimonies, but I'm going to say one. Uh, first, months back, I had some problems. I had so much problems which I couldn't even tell anyone. They were just disturbing me. But uh, in last week, there is a girl came here. She was crying and saying it was been with bad things and I felt so sorry for her but um, on Monday morning I say I was just standing after I wake up I say what can I do and I just prayed for that girl I don't know her I don't know anything but I just started praying for that girl but after I prayed for that girl I just felt like my heart was at peace and uh, Half of my things were done well in this week. So I want to thank God and I want to thank God that girl who came here to do this money. I'll continue praying for her. Amen. Uh, praise, me, praise good members. Amen. I want to thank God for my life and for your lives. Uh, I want to thank God that uh, I applied for McHenry and they actually gave me what I applied for. got an accounting in the making. I don't want to lose the opportunity of giving a testimony. It may be, it will be very short. I thank the Lord. I've been going through a hard time. Uh, like, uh, I think uh, some, some months. Not very many months anyway. But I thank the Lord that he has stood by me. 
And uh, one of the major things that I realized is that even as I was going through that time, I you know sometimes when you are going through a hard time, you feel like, let me just stay at home. Uh, I feel bad and I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to see anybody. But I told myself that I'll go to church. And uh, when I came to church, really, I would feel like my burden is off, is lifted. And I want to thank the Lord because let's not stay away. Let's stay, come to church. Because when you come to church, the Lord ministers to you. You may stay alone and be online, but even with staying online, you are still alone. But when you are with others, you feel the presence of the Lord and the, the loneliness is removed. So I thank the Lord for his hand upon my life. Now I was informed there's a special. So, oh, by the way, let's pray over our testimonies. Almighty Father, you have done great things for us, and we cannot thank you enough. You have stood by us. You are a friend above friends. Lord God Almighty, we cover our testimonies with the blood of Jesus. We pray that even those who are not able to come, maybe they fear or they don't feel this, uh, their testimony is worth talking about. Lord, I pray that we all use the opportunity to testify because it is part of our victory. It's part of worship of the Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory, we honor you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Even if you're not able to give a testimony here, take opportunity to tell someone even after we finish church. God bless you. We have that special. Let's clap for the choir. Amen. special person but all of us are going to sing it as, as pastor comes. Uh, it's an old hymn that we used to sing back then called Behold What Man I Would Love the Father's given unto us. So we'll first sing uh, the entire line twice. Then the third time um, the ladies will remain on, on the chorus while the men sing the verse and then after that we exchange and then all of us will sing together again.
Father, we want to thank you. Father, we want to praise you. What manner of love has the Father given unto us that we should be called the sons of God? We know it's by the grace of God we can be called children of God. Nothing to do with what we can do with our human abilities, O oh Father. Therefore, Lord our God, we thank you and we praise you and I adore your holy name. Lord, even as we gather this morning for your word, O oh Jesus, we know it's by your love we can stand to hear your word. To many, the word of God makes no sense. To many, the word of God has nothing to take, O oh God. But to us, it's a fool that our souls feed on, Lord Jesus, to be able to be like you, O oh God. Father, we want to thank you. Father, we want to praise you. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give our choir. joy for us to be in God's house this morning. Greet your neighbor on the left and the right. Say, neighbor, you are welcome. You are in the right place at the right time. There's no better place to be but the presence of God of Israel. We give God all the glory and all the praises. You're welcome, church. Welcome, believers. Welcome, saints of God. Uh, Brother Simon, you're welcome. I mean, it's exciting to be in God's house. Praise the Lord. So exciting. Uh, just your head is up, uh, the month of August coming, we're going to talk about the gates of worship and praise. So we're going to be into a lot of praise, a lot of worship as a congregation. So that one month we're going to do nothing but doing exactly that. So we thank God for who the Lord is. Uh, uh, many of our people today are, are everywhere, people at the back, uh, please come in and sit or the children, please go to our classes. Uh, that would be beautiful. Uh, to be exciting to do that. I, I was saying that uh, uh, since we're an interesting season as church, uh, Elder Sam Bagosa is online, but I don't know whether now he has left Dubai, uh, but he's in between Dubai and Tanzania. Uh, somehow we'll be flying back home this week. And uh, this morning, uh, very on, uh, uh, Dr. Newton, I think, is on his way to Moscow. Uh, people are beginning to go out there. My wife will be going to China this evening. So we're having an interesting time together, and I know the Lord is at work. Someone has been all over the country, is that right? So we praise the Lord that we're able to uh, have brethren move over the place uh, and do the work of God and whatever they do uh, for the kingdom of God. Just again to emphasize, uh, end of this month, uh, July 30th, we'll be celebrating seven years as church and uh, to be a great time to also have our AGM as well. And so we're looking forward for a great, great time uh, to uh, worship God together. So plan to be there that Sunday to be one service at nine uh, up to one o'clock. Uh, there'll be many things we want to, which want to do, giving audits. Uh, right now our audit is almost done uh, for the, the other year. And therefore, we thank God. So, uh, let, let's uh, gear up to do God's work, and we're going to see a good things. And maybe also the reminder is, uh, we are now getting back our masters again to make sure that the construction work continues. One, make sure we raise up those beams up in the name of the Lord, because together we can do it, and also be able to work towards the construction, the, the roof uh, of God's house. We are tired of being... Uh, in an open place, we want to go to a beautiful place uh, right uh, up here. Let's open our Bibles to uh, First John chapter 3. Uh, we are in the first uh, episode uh, of uh, John. Uh, we have done chapter 1, and we are now done doing chapter 2 last week, but we are doing chapter 3. 
and so on to look at it. Just take note to know that as we continue uh, in this episode, in chapter 3, and of course the previous ones, John is writing to, uh, to those who through righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ have actually received the knowledge uh, of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's writing to believers, saints, uh, those men and women who uh, were born again at the time. And thank God God's word is eternal that much as it was written, the believers then, the word of God spoke about to us today. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says that everything else will pass away, but this word will never pass away. So God's word is relevant to yesterday, relevant today, and relevant tomorrow until Christ uh, returns. So let me uh, read that chapter with 24 verses or so uh, together. Just follow with me, open your Bible, and we're going to God's word. Say, seeing what great love uh, the Father has lavished on us, what, that we should be called children of God. And that's why we sang the song we sang last. What man of love are the Father given unto us, you know, that we should be called uh, children of God Most High. And that is what we are. The reason we, we, the world does not know us is that it is not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him. Now, I really like that. We shall be like Jesus and uh, see him as he is. Now, remember that time, our bodies would have been changed. In other words, our bodies won't be like the human bodies as we have them. The body you and I have right now are bodies that are still impacted by sin and iniquity and failure and limitations. But when we are translated, our bodies will be like the bodies are of, of are that are eternal. Or better put, the bodies that Adam had before sin came into the world. That's how the bodies uh, are going to be at that time. And so shall see him as uh, he is. So the Bible says, all, of, all who have this hope in him pur purify themselves just as is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who comes, who continues to sin, and has neither seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. Now, here he is dealing with the, the, the first teachers uh, who were there in their day. Remember, these were the Gnostics, the men and women who believed that the higher knowledge they thought to them, sin wasn't a big problem of man, but to them, knowledge was the most important need. Unfortunately, this is what uh, many of the cults in our town today are teaching. That all you need is knowledge of who God, deeper knowledge, deeper prophecy, deeper this and the other, and they ignore sin. And so a sin being replayed again uh, in our day. So uh, verse 7 says, dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is, what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of Man appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's sin remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know the children of God, are, and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not, does not do what is right is not God's child. Nor is one who does not love their brother and sister. Verses 11. For this is the message you had from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged the devil, the evil one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil. And his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my, br my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. 
and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Verse 16, this is how we know that what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If you know us, uh, material possessions, and sees a brother or a sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be that person? That's a big question for us uh, to answer. Verse 18, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action is in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and we know and he knows everything, sorry, pardon me, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our, our hearts not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what it pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ and to love one another as commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave to us. John writes chapter 3 with many things in mind. And John is making a point uh, for the church of the day and age he lived in, but also the church today. And, and I believe that God's word is eternal. God's word remains effective as to where then, as it is today, and to always be. Meaning that John is writing to us in the end time church as to where. Uh, let me just remind us that we are the end time church. After us, there will be no any other church because God is completing up his work on planet earth in the name of Jesus. So, uh, as John writes in here, he emphasizes a great component about love. Love is a key component to a believer. We thank God that as a church, our number one core value, among many others, is love. Love is the most important commandment as we want to see. Without love, it would be impossible for any marriage to function, to work or to operate. But also, you and I are born again today because of the love of Jesus. If Jesus didn't love us, he wouldn't have paid the price he paid on the foot of the cross. But because of his love for you and for me, he paid the penalty that he died on our behalf on the foot of the cross. And because of love, we are born again. Because we are born again, we must express the same love every other day. Without love, as a believer, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. And God's love will always compel us to do what we wouldn't have done ordinarily. Are you really a believer? Are you really born again? Do your words that come out of your mouth full of love? What about the thoughts inside of you? And the actions that you do, even in privacy, the things that you do, do they demonstrate the true love of God or their mere deceptions? I'm appealing to us, a time church, that if we are going to be God's children, then the love of God must uphold who we are and what we believe in. So the law of God for the Christians is to love God with everything within us and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. If we do that, we we'll please to God. Otherwise, to live in sin is turning out from God. You see, sin, whenever it is done, is an action of hatred to God. It is as if we don't care about who God is whenever we sin. And more so when we sin and fail to repent of our sins or refuse to repent or refuse to own up of our mistakes. But when we own up of our mistakes, it's a sign that 
we are remorseful and we generally love God. In the natural, when you wrong somebody, you are supposed to, to take responsibility and honor and reconcile. And you do that because you love the other party. And because of that, you are really a person who loves. But when you say, I will never do this or reconcile or forgive, it's a sign of hatred, as we're going to see. So in time of church, God is calling upon the church to love and to care. First John 3, 5 said, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Jesus came that you and I will live a life of purity, of righteousness and holiness, and a life that, that carries no blemish around who we are. In other words, our testimony is clear and sure and certain and unchallengeable, I swear. Now, in the cultic world, and in the false uh, teacher's doctrine, to them, sin is no problem. You can sin, do as you please, because God is a God of grace. You heard about all this gospel uh, about grace that, you know, even when you sin, God is never going to hold you accountable because your body is human and therefore it fell, therefore it's okay to God and do whatever you want to do. Now, all the things are lies. Sin hurts God. Whether it is thought about or whatever done or uh, thought about or said or, you know, whatever we do that is sinful, we always hurt God as it hurts each one of us when somebody does it. Therefore, God is calling upon us to be pure and to be holy just like he himself is pure. Now, let's pick up a few takeaways and a few lessons out of this entire chapter of, uh, 3 of the book of First John. Number one, it was for love that we are God's children. It is for love that you are born again. It is for love that you are who you are. To be a child, daughter, son of God is because God first loved us. God is love and whatever he does, including the painful death on the cross of our sins, was fully motivated by pure love. Who can go through that agony if there is no love? The humiliation. By the way, Christ was beaten, he was, his body was damaged, and luckily Jesus was crucified naked. I know the preacher has come up and he has got a cloth around his waist, but actually from his scriptures, Jesus was crucified naked. Total humiliation. Now, none of us can dare walk like that unless something's wrong. But our Jesus was humiliated for your sake and for my sake. Jesus was beaten up because of you and because of me. And because that was so, we can conclude one thing, because of his love for the sinning man and the sinning woman. The Bible says, verse chapter 4, which we'll see next week, God is love, and he that draweth in love draweth in God, and God is in him. It was this love that took Jesus on the cross. John 3, 6, as we know it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved and his son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It was love. When you love somebody, you always go the extra mile. Even if they don't deserve it, you go and give it to them, or do something for them because you love them. A good example are mothers. How mothers sacrifice their children even when they know my son, my daughter is a thief, uh, my, my, my daughter is a harlot, they will still love the daughter anyway. Why? Because they are the mother they love for them, they will go the extra mile. Now in the same way also, God is love, of course much more, he went the extra mile. It was for love that you are a child of God. If there was no love, all of us, would have been lost forever. This is what God is telling us. That's who should be grateful. Who should be thankful. Are you grateful that you're born again? Are you thanking God that you're a child of God and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Or are you just saying, well, I deserve it anyway, so thank you for sending me. I mean, I had my other way. 
we should be grateful. Number two, in eternity, we will see Jesus. The verse has told us in verse number two all the way, it says, dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, not directly there, not if Christ appears, but says when he appears, we shall be like him, and we shall see him as he is. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Can you imagine someday when you will see Jesus as he is? To many of us, we have never been maybe 10 meters away from Mr. Psalm 7. He is too big to be seen. He's powerful and guarded and all that. I mean, he's the Alpha. But praise be to God, we are guaranteed someday to meet our Jesus face to face. The Gnostics are never certain about meeting Jesus. The false teachers, when it comes to the issue of eternity, they are never guaranteed. They are never sure about many things. But we want to thank God that we as believers in God, we are certain. As long as we are born again, we shall see Jesus someday. And he's coming back soon in the rapture. When he takes us, we'll be glorified and we'll be changed. And thereafter, in a thousand uh, years of, of just in the millennial kingdom, we will be changed. And in eternity, we will definitely meet our Jesus. What a hope! This is called a blessed hope. And that means that you and I need to live pure lives. The Bible says in verse 3, therefore, purify yourselves. It has said, all who have this hope in him, purify themselves just as he is. In other words, Jesus is our groom. We are the bride. The church is a bride. And so, if you are the bride, you make sure that you, know, you are prepared. I've been a pastor for quite a while, and I've had the privilege of winning many couples. But I'll tell you something interesting. Even if the couple sinned before they got married and they got pregnant before then, they always come in clean gowns. I've never seen a bride in a dirty gown. It, it doesn't happen. It's not common. In any case, I'm just thinking, can you imagine if that's your bride? Come on, any guys in the house? Those who are married especially? Will you guys and wear her in the church? Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. Will you gonna hear him? Ha! Thank God the castle never appeared like that. I thought there would have been no wedding that day. Why? Because the expectations are the bride must be sparkling neat and clean, ready on the wedding day. And of course, even the guy must be ready, clean and neat. Jesus is calling upon us that he is coming back again. The church, end time church, must be walking in purity and in holiness. Brethren, if we keep meandering in the scene as the cults do and force teachers teach and all that, we will never meet our Jesus. You are the bride. We are the bride. And so we need to walk in the path of righteousness. It's a call God has placed upon us as believers. So church, do not be soiled with false doctrine taught by false teachers. Otherwise, you will be left behind. All this is satanic agenda of falsehood to get you dirty and be left when Christ Jesus returns. Don't be deceived. Don't be lied to. Remain in the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth of God ushers us in the presence of God. And this truth is what we need today. Which the false teachers are, 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 are diffusing away. They are pushing it back and forth and keep on when they bring truth, they also bring a lie. I told you last Sunday that all false teachers and all false doctrine does four things, all of them, to scripture. 
Number one, the subtract of God's word, they multiply God's word, they add to God's word, and they also divide of God's word. All the time. You follow them. Uh, we have a nice book. Uh, we're trying to build up our library. It's called The Kingdom of the Cowards. It's a, a big book. And the author and the father was called Hank Hanegraaf. A very good book about first teachers and, and first doctrine. You find all these Mormonists in there. You find in uh, the SDAs, of course, the Roman Catholic Church is the biggest cult in the world. You find all these many. They're in there. The, the, the Church of the Latter day Saints. You know, in there. And why are they wrong? Let me just give you a bit of that, which actually was a teaching of the, the other church false teachers called the Gnostics. The Gnostics, as I said, believe that number one man's problem is not sin. To them, it was a lack of knowledge. And they, they were believing that if you somebody gets knowledge and a higher level of knowledge, then you cannot uh, you know, be where you are, but you actually become God. And unfortunately, most of these cows today, check Fanero, check uh, Zoe, unfortunately, that's where they take it. I'm saying it's painful because I'm perfect, now I'm not. We all work in progress. In fact, the whole of last week our prayer was, Lord, help our church to remain on sound doctrine. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's so sad. I mean, they all begin well. And somehow the devil begins to work at it, and before you know, somebody's off the tangent. And the devil, you know, as I say, doesn't come with a, a, a long tail, you know, and their big horns, and says, Here I come, the devil, and I come, the deceiver. He is extremely neat and smooth. And before you know it, they begin their battle. God is calling upon us to be pure and holy in our, fault, in our doctrine. Number three, John, in this chapter, brings a call to genuine godly love. I say it, not just love, but genuine, sincere, true, honest love, authentic love. It's calling upon us to have the kind of love because this is the love that God desires and God demands. Verse 11 says, For this is the message you had from the beginning. We should love one another. Do you really love your neighbors? Do you even have their numbers? Do you even care? When someone doesn't come to church three, four weeks, do you even bother to say, let me call John and say, John, what happened to you today? Or Thomas, do you really care? And that's the level of care God is calling upon us at GFM Church, to love one another, to be there for those who are needed, to care for those who are in want, to stand for those who are in need. I should thank you again, GFM, uh, by the grace of God, our sister Kate is out of prison. Of course, the case still continues, but we thank God she's out. As she battles and makes sure that, you know, things are done, what went, whatever went wrong is put right. But we stood together to stand. It was not an easy thing, but we thank God we did. But you need to care much more, brethren and sisters, to love one another, to be there for others. The world out there is looking for genuine love. And the Bible said in verse number 12, Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And we're told why he murdered him. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were what? Shout aloud. Evil. Shout aloud. Evil. They were evil. Those who murder those little things, the actions are evil. Somebody's pleading, please do not kill me. They still kill. Don't take my land. They still take the land. Evil and wickedness. And the Bible said, and these brothers, that is uh, 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 Abel, they were righteous. Verse 13, 
Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. Because you see, the more you're going to be godly, the more you'll be an outcast. Hey, you don't even drink. You can't come to the party because you're a believer. I mean, they will ridicule you and mock you up. I, I will never forget uh, my four years when I, before I came to minister, I was in Pep School and we used to have this enter, end, end, not end time, uh, end of year parties. Man, they were mega. You, you, you get a coupon, uh, you know, to access, of course, sodas were available. That was the thing they should talk about. They would just make sure all the crates are in there. But, but they will give you, uh, by then they used to about 14 uh, bottles of beer. Yeah, there were 14. And then uh, uh, a couple of tots. You know, tots or something? Anyway, they would bring all those many things. And then, of course, you have nothing to do with this kind of things. You would come be there for the, the meeting and then after you leave. And then, like, you mean you're going now? The disco's about to start. And like, well, <laughs> I'll have another disco somewhere else. Church, God is calling upon us to have genuine, godly love for God. That means that you do only what pleases God. What doesn't please Him, you let it be. Even if it is enticing, even if it looks good and nice, let us not be compromised. Because in being compromised, uh, telling you, well, just take a bit, let's mix a soda. Those tell me, like this, no, just mix a soda into a bit of beer. You know, it will be that you let it be. And, and, and the brethren, we're not awake. They believe the lies. So they mixed uh, their soda into the uh, Mr. Chairman, that was the peer called at that time, whatever called now. And then they, they take the mix and they say, I agree, it is actually not so bad after all. Hey, you finish that class, you do another mix. Little by little and by little. By the end of the day of that night, you look at the pictures people took of the one who said is a believer. And you wonder whether the brother really is a brother or he is not. God is calling up, calling us to get out of them. Any time church, GFM church, let us love our God with honesty and sincerity. Once we have this genuinely, there will be no room for sin. Once we are genuine, there will be no room for sin. As I said earlier, love is our number one core value as church. To love one another, to care for each other, to stand with one another, to be sincere in every other way. Even those who are deserving our love, let's give it to them in the name of Jesus. And we're doing it for God, by the grace of God. The strangers out there, men and women out there, all are looking for love. Let us give it and share it by the grace of God. Love breaks barriers, restores broken relationships, brings assurance, brings joy, peace, and freedom, and of course, liberty comes with it as we love and exercise the true genuineness of the love God has given unto us. Tuesday last week, I, I walk in here, of course, all quiet because I saw the famous who are in here. And I, I find a young lady sitting right here. I don't know whether she needs service, I don't know what dress is in here. And early morning, and I'm thinking, who comes to church early morning? And, and you know, pastors who have learned the other way. When you receive some of the phone calls, you know there is a problem because people never call you unless there is a problem. And then others, when they come to church, then there's trouble, which is unfortunate. Uh, uh, anyway, when I saw her, I knew there was trouble. So uh, I, I set up myself and all that. I'm like, God, uh, give me wisdom. Something I do quite pretty to pray before I meet any person to be able to be helpful with the person. And he said, all these long things and issues and matters and, but, you know, ah, this stuff and all that. Anyhow, we pray. And after prayer, and encouragement from scripture, she was encouraged and she left a happy girl. Now, up now, I've seen her again. It means things are working. If they're not working, she should have come back. Now, that's a bad measure of things, not so. It's a bad measure. 
But the point I'm raising, we all need love, and we must share this love. There's a story I loved about Amanda. Amanda received a, a flower banquet, and there were 11 uh, flowers in them. And in it, there was a note uh, saying, written by her husband, that, you know, my love will last until the day the last flower dies. So 11 of them in a jar, uh, that place where you keep the flowers, and the note was, my love will be for you as long as, <laughs> you know, the flowers are alive, the last one. Now we all know that flowers never last long, don't we? So the first one dies. She counts now, 10 are remaining. Nine, eight, seven. He's like, oh, now this man might be finding someone else. Four, three. Of course, if you were a wife and your husband did that, you were like, now what is Kefil already up to? Not so. Anyway, this guy was a bright guy. The last flower was actually a plastic flower. Did you hear that? Meaning that, whereas all this natural organic one will give away, the plastic one will endure forever. In quotes, of course. Praise the Lord. So God's love is like that. And we should give that kind of love that stands solid. When you make a promise, fulfill it. When you show love, show it in love with those things attached to it by the grace of God. What John Philistine said, this is how we know that we love what what love is, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we all lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possession and sees a brother stand in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear friends, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Love that endures. Lesson number four. We can know for sure we are in all out of Christ Jesus. It is unlikely that we don't know. You know, forget about some whites now who are kind of confused, who cannot tell whether they are men or they are women. I I'm sure those people didn't come to church today. You a man, you're not sure you're a man. Those didn't come, I'm sure. They don't hear, right? All women who are here, they're not sure whether they are actually women. We know it's known you are this sex male or you're female. Or you can know you are single or you're not married. Now, God is telling us that we can know for sure. Verse 19. The Bible says in verse 19 that and after being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. Sorry, I'm reading somewhere, something different. Sorry. Uh, verse 19, uh, saying, This is how we know that we belong to the truth, and now we set our hearts at rest in His praises. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we keep His commands. And do what pleases him. We can be sure. We can be certain. In the dark age of the Gnostics or false uh, teachers of the other church, they are telling them, you can never be sure you'll go to heaven. And I'm sure many of us have been asked that question. How sure are you go to heaven? How many of you have that kind of question? Where somebody's causing you doubt. Questioning God is interpreted. God is interpreted as firm that we will be in heaven. And we are going to walk and to reach the eternal destination. And that's our path. Like I've been making this up here to give him charge. We must make sure we are destined to heaven. Don't remain anywhere behind. Don't get stuck by the roadside. Don't remain by the hillside. Don't be stuck in the valley side. But let us walk together a time to someday to go to glory in heaven to be with the Father. 
God is truth. Youth's awareness that we are God's children. Truth by nature keeps people in, in the know. But false doctrine always brings the opposite and keeps people in the not knowing because it's only the preacher who knows what is true or he has got a higher knowledge, a higher level of understanding, and others know less. No way in God's church. In God's church, we have the same Holy Spirit you have and I have, and we share him together. So you can know the truth, and I can know the truth, and together we know the truth of God's word, and we stand by that truth to lead and guide our lives to grace and to glory in heaven someday. Somebody say amen. amen. One of the reasons why many remain in the courts and false churches is because they are taught you don't know the truth. The man of God must give you a revelation. He has a prophecy. He has this knowledge that you do not have. You are made inferior, yet you are actually superior together in Christ Jesus. As he knows, you can know. May God help us that at Jephon Church, we are all solid when it comes to God's word. We are all knowledgeable in the truth and the knowledge of God's word. May we grow to maturity that when a false liar teacher comes forth, we can easily identify who he is. Don't be taken advantage of because of lack of knowledge, but rather walk in the truth and in righteousness of God. I love the scripture, Luke 4 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, just speaking, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. This same Holy Ghost of God is upon us, and this same anointing of Jesus is upon us. Remember the words of Jesus when he was living. He left us the Holy Spirit as our comforter to guide us in all righteousness. That's why every other day, call upon the Holy Ghost upon your life to lead you in all truth, to guide you in the ways of the Lord, to shield you from evil, from sin, from iniquity and transgressions. That your life will be a reflection of who God is. That you will be able to manifest the truth of God's word. And therefore, you will be the salt and you will be the light in darkness that we live in today. The Lord is calling upon us as an entire church to walk in the truth, to walk in love, to bear with one another, to be upright, to be godly. Maybe you are saying, I think things possible. Yes, they are possible. Abraham was. Joshua was. Luke was. Matthew, Bartholomew, all these men and women, Queen Esther and others were all righteous before God. If they were, then we can. And we can do the right thing. So as we conclude today, in this entire chapter, John described how wonderful the love of God is for his people. And now, hope as his loving children should motivate us to lead pure and holy lives. And John said that believers should live a righteous life since they can differentiate between good and evil. He summarizes it up. And John doesn't miss his words at all. But I'm asking a question today. You have come to church today. Thank you. You did the right thing in the whole world this day. But I'm asking a question. Are you born again? Is Jesus in your heart? If you came back today, will you be among those the number to go to glory or you're not sure about your place in Christ? So if 
You're not yet born again. And you're saying, I want to receive Jesus. Just put up your right hand and I'll pray with you. Because it's only other way. There is no any other way. To go to heaven is through Christ Jesus. And a person a minister, you want to receive Jesus? Okay. If you know you are born again, please stand up on your feet. If you know for sure that you are born again, stand boldly before the Lord Jesus. And I want us to thank God for this word. Let us receive it with gratitude. This word we have got today in 1 John chapter 3. Just go ahead and close your eyes if you could for a moment and receive this word in prayer. And say, Lord, I receive this word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for the truth of your word. Come and go ahead right now, wherever you are. Close your eyes and speak to God. Some of us want mama, not mama, just speak, be audible. It's not be audible. Yet thank God for the word today. The truth of God is one. Just say it is the way, the truth, and the life. So his word is truth. And so we thank him that we have been able to receive his word by the grace of God. Oh Lord, we thank you. Lord, we receive your word this morning. The word about love. The word about getting love. The word about living a pure life. The word about having the hope eternal. We receive the word of God. Only to pray that, ask the Lord God will help you to walk in purity, to walk in holiness, to walk in the fear of the name of the Lord. That you will never miss to go to heaven. Come and go ahead right now. Ask God to help you to walk in purity. And many many trials and temptations do not sell you a gown like the bride who will sell a picture earlier on. Do not sell yourself, whether in your words, whether in your thoughts, or imagination, or feelings, or in your actions. Come and go ahead and ask the Lord that you will walk pure and holy lives. Oh God. Oh Lord Jesus. Lord, help us. Not be compromised. Not be soiled. We live in a world of temptation. We live in a world full of wickedness and, and lies and immorality and all kind of things and that dishonor us, oh God, that may soil our, our garments of righteousness. Lord, help us, Lord, to uphold your truth of God. Even when things are difficult, Lord, help us not to sin against you, not to compromise our lives, not to be deceived of God. Oh, Lord, God, help us, God. Ribosaki. Rabasani. Come on, God, and ask God again, number three, that the Lord will, will fill your heart with eternal love. That eternity love, that love that compels to do good, that love that uh, goes extra mile on the sake of the sake of the others. Come on, ask God to fill you with this eternal love. The love of God be in you, in your feelings, in your beings, in who you are. That love of God that uh, causes you to do what is right, even when it is difficult to do it, but you're going to do it in the name of Jesus. Say. Come on, let's go to feel that love inside of who you are. Oh, Lord our God, feel us. Feel us with eternal love, oh God. Oh, Jesus, let the eternal love of God fill our bosoms, fill our minds, fill our feelings, fill our thoughts, fill our tongues, oh God. The Lord comes out of our mouth will be nothing but the love of God. Rebo second. Oh Lord our God. Oh Ribosaka. Oh Lord our God. Oh God. Let us pray finally that nothing will deter us to go to eternity. Nothing will fail us to go to heaven. Not the pleasures of this world. Not the things of this world. Not your personality or character. Nothing will fail you to go to eternity. Nothing. No, nothing. Not your work. Not your business. Not anything. But, but let the love of God, I mean, keep 
you sustain your life. Oh Jesus, sustain us, Lord God. Lord righteousness, sustain us, Father. Yes, the world is evil. In the days of Noah, it was the same way. But those men stood their ground. No compromise. Lord, he help us. Father, help us. Father, help us. At Jephthah Church, as the body of Christ in this nation, on this continent of Africa, Lord, he help us to be strong. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Lord, come and go ahead and just honor God. Just praise the Lord Jesus. As we pray that you will not be left behind, oh. we thank you, Pastor, for your message. Let's thank the Lord for the words. You can sit and we'll continue with uh, worshipping the Lord with our tithe and offerings. Let us give with thanksgiving. Invite the ashes to wait upon us. Let's thank the Lord for the message that we have been given today as the church that will walk in righteousness and will have undiluted love that will be ready not only to love those in the church but even those who are outside the church, because it is part of ministry. For the parents and guardians who dedicated their children on 2nd July, the certificates for dedication are available. Please go and pick them from the office, from Rachel in the office. At the table. Oh, okay. They are available at the reception table with Miriam. Miriam, please put up your hand. Uh -huh. Thank you, Miriam. So, if you have uh, your, your child was dedicated, the certificates are available. The church construction is still continuing. Please let's not, uh, let's continue. Uh, giving towards the construction of the church, each one of us. And uh, whatever, whether it's small or big, let's not wait for the fundraising. Let's continue giving. In the red bag, actually, the purple bag, it's for the construction. On Sunday, Sunday, July 30th, GFM is uh, celebrating seven years of God's goodness and faithfulness. Let's clap to the Lord. Yes, we are celebrating seven years as a church. And on that date, we are also going to hold the annual general meeting. So let's come together as we rejoice. We are also going to be hearing about what is taking place concerning the church. And then the month of August is, is going to be a month of praise. And we'll be having teachings on every Sunday about praise. So please make sure you attend. And then the last week of August will be will crown, crown the month of uh, August with praise the whole week. In other words, from Monday to Friday, we are going to be having uh, sessions and activities of praise and worshiping the Lord. So even the overnight, please make sure you come. The details about the month will be shared as we continue in the weeks to come. So please make sure you do uh, be part of the month of praise and worship. Let's thank the Lord for the offerings. Almighty Father, we thank you that you have 
provided for us. We thank you for the tithe, the offerings, the seeds offering, the fast fruits, and um, everything that your children have brought to you. We are very grateful. King of glory, we pray that you bless the hands that are given. Lord, there are some who are not able to give. Lord God Almighty, we pray that you will also bless them that will be able to give. Oh. And there are some of us who may have held our hand. Teach us to give because whatever we own is given by you. We are just stewards. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 So we are going to end. We are going to end our service. And I I invite Pastor to lead us in our closing prayer. Let us stand as we uh, conclude our service this afternoon. Lift up your hands, the right hand to the heavens. Uh, Almighty God, we uh, honor you. Uh, thank you for this day of your love and care to hear your word, Lord Jesus. With the right hand lifted up the heavens, Lord, we declare that, Father, our allegiance is entirely on you and you alone, Father. And we will never serve any other gods but you, Jehovah. That, Father, we will live for you, we will worship you, we will serve you. That, Father, all our lives are dedicated to Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Lord Most High. And, Father, we will stand on your word, Lord Jesus. And, Father, we pray that as we do that, your blessings, Lord, your love, your care, your wealth, your health, your mercy, your compassion, Lord, your favors will be upon our lives, my Father. That your children, Lord our God, will shine, Lord our God. That it will be the light in the world and the salt of the world, Heavenly Father. The Lord, our lives, Lord Jesus, will, will, will be meaningful, will bear a godly fruit, Lord Jesus, said, that when we come to heaven, Father, we will receive the crown of life. Father, we want to thank you. Bless the person, God, my Lord. I declare and declare blessing of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob, Heavenly Father. Let there be breakthroughs in the name of Jesus, said. Those who are looking for work, we pray they will find work. Those who have no incomes, we pray for the incomes of Father. Those who are marriages and stuff, we pray they will be healing in the name of Jesus. Say. Those who are traveling in and out of the country, in and out of the city, we pray for Janet Masses, my Father. We pray that our children will be safe and secure in the schools of God. Our grandchildren, our spouses, Heavenly Father. Whenever we touch, we shall prosper because of the fear of God upon the children of us, O God. We thank you in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's have the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God will you bless you, and make you a blessing. Amen. Oh, my love, Oh, uh -huh.